This is Zone One Radio. Zone One Radio. This is Audio Book Club, the world's only interactive audiobook review podcast. It started 1.30 on a cold Tuesday morning in January when Martin Turner, street performer and, in his own words, apprentice gigolo, tripped over a body in front of the west portico of St Paul's at Covent Garden. Martin, who was none too sober himself, at first thought the body was that of one of the many celebrants who had chosen the piazza as a convenient outdoor toilet and dormitory. Being a seasoned Londoner, Martin gave the body the London once over, a quick glance to determine whether this was a drunk, a crazy, or a human being in distress. The fact that it was entirely possible for someone to be all three simultaneously is why good Samaritanism in London is considered an extreme sport like base jumping or crocodile wrestling. Martin, noting the good quality coat and shoes, had just pegged the body as a drunk when he noticed that it was in fact missing its head. So, hello and welcome to Audiobook Club, the world's only interactive audiobook review podcast. I'm Steve Phillips and my job is to help you find your next great listen, which of course you can only do after you've finished listening to us. Uh, this week, the first of a very special two-parter on the Rivers of London series, including an interview with the author Ben Aronovich. Joining me now, my Adelaide-based audiobook devouring colleague, Matthew Layton. Matthew, how were the test results? Uh, all very positive, Steve. Thank you. I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, no, I'm good. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this one. Uh, it's been very nice to do the first one together, Steve, you and me. I thought we did quite a good job. So we've got this interview coming up. Ben Aronovich, the author of the Rivers of London series, was so generous with his time uh, that we've had to make two shows out of it. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to hearing, because I don't know, what you think of uh, the book and the series in general. Um, I've got to say, he, he was a great... He was a great conversation. What a what a what a nice guy as well. And uh, we should just let you know at this point that when we recorded this, it felt like we were actually dialing Ben from the International Space Station, and it, had, it ended up with with Matt sort of holding phones and so on. And I couldn't really hear what Ben was saying. So I'm looking forward to hearing Ben's replies to my questions to him, and indeed your questions to him as well. Um, so really looking forward to hearing from Ben later, and we will indeed be discussing the Rivers of London series. So as previously mentioned. We're all about the interaction. We'd like you to be the stars of our show. Here are the rules again. Uh, in each episode of Audio Book Club, we'll review an audiobook. Uh, we'll not only talk about the content, but also how it's performed. And we want you to get involved. Very simple. There's a hashtag, of course, as there ever is these days. Just use hashtag Audio Book Club on Twitter or Instagram and give us your thoughts. If you've got a lot to say, there's room for longer, more insightful critique on our Facebook page. Just go to Facebook and search for Audio Book Club, all one word. The next rule is, and at this point, the person who suggested the book has to give us a brief overview and explain as to why she or he has brought the book to the table and ask us to spend uh, 10 hours of our lives listening to it. So, Matt, Rivers of London, speak your brains. Um, Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich. I first came across this series about five years ago as I was getting into audiobooks. Um, I said that in part of the interview uh, that won't be in today's show, uh, but yeah, Christmas presents for my wife for the last year, five years have been sorted. It's very, very, very me. It's, it's London-based. It has a fantastical twist to it. Um, when I spoke to, to Ben Aronovich, having done my research for once, uh, we grew up about two miles apart. So many of the references and the, 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 the London vocabulary was, was familiar to me. And... Uh, particularly uh, being, you know, a few thousand miles f away from home at the moment, I really enjoyed getting back into the the, the London pace of things through these books. Um, so there are ten books in total now. I think I, 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 I think this is technically book seven point five. Oh, something to do. It's the eight, ninth or tenth book, um, but the, all of the books are centered around uh, PC Peter Grant. He's twenty five years old. He's just graduated as a police officer from Hendon, 
Um, he's been on probation, probation for about a year and it doesn't seem to be going very well for him and it looks like he's going to be shuffled off to the admin department. Um, but as you heard from the clip we played at the top of the show, the first book opens in Scovent, Covent Garden um, with the discovery of a headless corpse and that's the beginning of this really long uh, series of adventures which manages to include references to unicorns built like shire horses, 2,000-year-old river spirits, Greg's the baker, and m and uh, Percy pigs, and somehow kind of make it all make sense. Um, as much as the story, I think the... The, the strut of the book is really important. The, 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 it's swagger. Um, it, the, the series is modern. It's down to earth. It's lovely to get Peter Grant's insights as to, you know, why we behave like this as police officers and, and how to handle the public. Um, he refers to it, to, to the Metropolitan Police Service as, as described by reasonable people, or that's the filth to you. It's that kind of thing. Um, and this book is really, as I say, I, I, it was strange reading the first book again because I realised I've sort of been slightly in love with Peter Grant and, and have found him a comfort in troubled times uh, for, for five or six years now. And I didn't remember the bit about the horrible thing about the baby being thrown out the window in chapter three. It really, in places, it's quite gruesome um but incredibly addictive so you found yourself when you were going back to the first book uh sorry to interrupt matt you found yourself going back to the first book and you found yourself discovering things you hadn't heard you hadn't sort of really thought about first time round. yeah and and again things i hadn't quite remembered i mean i'm on some really good medication so you know my memory is not the tops these days but um yeah i i i really enjoyed it anew the second time and i think it if you top them all up, there's about 90 hours of listening in there uh, and none of it felt like a chore. Um, but listen, I think we're meant to do the opinion bit once we've listened to the interview, aren't we? Yep, that's a good plan. So uh, we'll lead us to part two, the actual opinion bit, shall we? And just uh, hear from the man himself. Yeah, um, and again, I, I second your um, uh, apology in advance for the quality of the audio. Um, we were in a situation where uh, we had been told that Mr. Aronovich only uses Skype. Uh, and then when we phoned Mr. Aronovich, he couldn't quite get access to his his Skype. So with his time being very valuable, we decided, long story short, that we'd do it over the phone. And yes, indeed, I ended up holding one phone with you on on speaker up to the microphone and another phone with him on on speaker up to the microphone. So it's going to be a little disjointed, but I, I hope it's worth listening to because I certainly, I'm, I'd rather we did it that way than didn't get it at all. You literally put elbow grease into it. You were holding those phones up for a full hour. So uh, well done on that. And I hope you've recovered since then. Uh, let's hear from... It hurts. It, it, it so hurts. It so hurts. Um, but let's face it, Ben was an absolute, absolute gem. And if you're a fan of the Rivers of London series and a fan of Ben Aronovich's work, and I, I'm, I'm just saying we're still, we're over that 15 minutes into the podcast and I haven't mentioned the hand of Omega or Battlefield or any Doctor Who fanning out. So really quite pleased with myself there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> here is <laughs> Mr. Aronovich. Joining us now, the man behind Peter Grant and the Rivers of London series of novels, audiobooks, comics, and now a novella, Ben Aronovich. How the devil are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. I'm fine very well. Fantastic. Well, we'll um, the Rivers of London series <laughs> is, is so many things. It's a, a police procedural drama, an immersive fantasy universe, a GCSE science project, even a, a critique on London architecture. Um, just wondering, can you help us out here a little bit, Ben? We've been trying to sum up the Rivers of London series for a couple of weeks now in preparation for this show. And it's so many things we found it hard to pin down. So maybe a good place for us to start was, is by asking you, who is Peter Grant? <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I knew had a much better idea when I started who he was, but he keeps surprising me. Um, yeah, he's, he's, I don't know, he's your he's he's average Londoner. <laughs> You know, he just happens to be a police officer who's interested in architecture. He then meets the wizard and becomes a wizard apprentice and fights crime. You 
so you sounded you sounded quite sane for the first couple of sentences of that, but uh, yeah, it it takes a turn quite quickly, doesn't it? Well, I mean, one of the things you know, I, 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 there's been a lot of stuff where people uh, who uh, were right introduced to the supernatural and spent like two or three episodes or half a book running around going, no, no, it can't be real, it can't be, and I was really bored of that, so I thought, fine, I'm just going to do a character who goes, oh, magic, and then get on with it because. I thought that was a very London sort of thing to do. Go, oh, magic's real. All right. So Ben, I'm I'm quite new to this, very new to this series, and I've, I've really enjoyed the first book. It, it's, it's been really right up my alley. Matt tells me I'm going to go through a bit of an emotional roller coaster with Peter before I get to the new novella, October Man. Um, obviously, without too many spoilers, can you give me some sort of idea about what lies ahead for me? No, not without spoilers. <laughs> oh, right. Time on a question. No. <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> I couldn't resist that. That was too much of a straight line. Um, oh, oh God, let me think. Without spoilers, yeah. Well, let's just say that there are some unforeseen circumstances. There are unforeseen. No, that's a spoiler. <laughs> let's just say. That, you know, Has that story just become all, exclusive? <laughs> it's not all strawberries and cream in the in the, in the magic police, and uh, occasionally the occasional um, the reversal will happen. Do you, you know, know I, you read I, the books. I've read the books. I've read the books, or I've audio booked the, the the books. And in one sense, it's about a young man growing up, isn't it? It's it's about his journey from. Uh, just coming out of education, in his case, you know, probationer well, and Metropolitan Police. Well, I didn't want it to be too much of a building for a man, so he's actually 25 when, although that, that's obviously, you know, when I was 25, I think you were supposed to be grown up at 25, but, you know, I'm going to put my old codger hat on and say, oh, no, usually today, let's 20, when they're 58. Um, that went wrong, because I'm 56, so... Uh, <laughs> You're about due for another gap yard, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, gap yard. No, I mean, no, well, I didn't want it to be that. I mean, if it's come across like that, I think it's a consequence of having a central character and then writing ten books about them. But as soon as you are going to develop, they are going to develop as a character. But I didn't really, I didn't really think of it as what they call a building's roman, which is a book about, you know, growing up. They could come and go up. I, I thought of it much more of, of like, yay, magic, cry, stuff. <laughs> I, I don't have a thematic brain that way. My brain goes, Christ, oh, things explode, things fall off, yay. London. Uh, kind of brain. And then I think about, oh, that's obviously significant in a kind of like, I kind of, I kind of look at, my motto is always, take care of the text and the subtext will take care of itself. And, and so therefore I tend to just think I will write this. And then I tend to be, look, I tend to, go like the next thing that's logically to happen happens or I go oh the story goes here and then the story goes there and and I don't think about it in terms of like a unified theme or something or, or I'm trying to tell a tell you know make a point or engage but I love that thing where it's like engages the you know, interrogates the nature of modern society no I fucking don't I don't interrogate the fine nature of modern society I, I just have a guy who does magic in Alice the Cock Good. Well, that pulls up both of our next questions then. Number one was, how much do you care about a story arc you've worked on Doctor Who and Blake Seven? And the second one was, oh, you walk the walk in terms of tolerance. You don't talk the talk. You, you know, all your characters come from uh, different ethnic backgrounds and, uh, you know, you've even got, you know, and it, anti-ageism, anti-ageism and anti-facial disfiguration, which are both key, but that's not deliberate then. You're just looking around you and, and drawing well, evidence from there. I mean, you know, I'm from London. So, you know, you're from London. So, I, I mean, for me, I was, grew up in a mixed area, mixed school. But, you know, all this, the first all-white institution I ever worked in was the BBC. Yeah. It was a bit of a shock. You know, you walk in and everyone's white. Ah! <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a bit of a surprise. And, I, you know, and one of the things was that I, I was working in television and working on things like Break 7 and you're under pressure from external pressure to, to whitewash the cast as much as possible. And when I came to Rivers of London, it was like, yes, finally, I'm writing a novel. No one can tell me what colour anyone is. So therefore, I just got to do what I wanted. 
but I didn't, in, you know, I didn't intend to. I mean, I have done some things. Like, I, I was very, very rocky on kind of things like trans, transsexualism and stuff like that. So um, I, I had to go on a bit of a steep learning curve. And there are, you know, there are things, things that I have become aware of that I have added, but I don't add them in a kind of very conscious way. I don't say to myself, right, I'm going to do this because I didn't make Peter Nick's race because I thought, oh, I must make Peter Nick. There was no point where Peter Grant was white. Mm. There, you know, there was a point where he was black and a woman, but there was no point where he was white. Well, so, you know, it wasn't like I was thinking to myself, oh, I must do this and I must do that. It's just, he just turned up that way. I mean, and there's a lot of characters like Sarah Lee, who Detective Sergeant, we should call her, Sarah Lee, that was a spoiler. Ha, she becomes Detective Sergeant later. No. Um, who, <laughs> who, who literally, I just needed a character to walk down the stairs with Peter. And I thought, quick, character. Um, Marley, good job. Okay. And now I can't get rid of her. And I knew nothing about the Somali community at that time. So I had to go out and do research. You know, I've been, you get hoisted by your own Picard sometimes. You just end up having to go out and do research that you weren't expecting to have to do. Because a character just comes along and then won't leave. And my books are full of that. I just sit there going, oh God, not another bloody character. Well, as you know, we're, we're, we're audiobook people. And for me, a really important part of Rivers of London has been um, the... It's not a reading, it's a, it's a performance by Cobner. Um, yeah, he's very, very good. He is Peter Grant, isn't he? Yes. He's, he's very, very good. I mean, he, I, I didn't choose him myself, but he, I did sort of, sort of put out the parameters for who... I, I said, you're going to have to get a black guy to do it. Because you know, you know, no, no white character actor, however good, is going to be able to do all the various kind of West African variations. <laughs> and, they, and I said it probably needs to be in London, and they got someone from Birmingham. But there you go. Oh, um, but again, <laughs> at, at the end of one of the books, it's somewhere four or five, I can't remember which. There's an interview where you and he are dragged into Audible Studios, um, yep. and. It just feels like he's your muse now, to a certain extent. It, from what you said of the organic way this has come together, I mean, I, 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 you know, there's an audiobook only um, uh, book in the series. Oh, it, was that inf- yeah. was that influenced by? I, as you say, you didn't set out to do that. Was that just because of what Cobner did with the form, and you enjoyed the form, or were you aware of audiobooks well, before? No, it's just, I mean, the thing is, if he was doing a bad job. Right, I wouldn't want to do an audio only short story. So, the, so it's like these things are interactive. These things are kind of never like a uh, clear cut kind of thing. So, you know, when he started, I didn't know that his version of Nightingale would be the version of Nightingale that would reverberate in my head whenever I'm writing Nightingale. And when he started, he didn't know that telling me how many accents he could do would mean that I would spend my time trying to find accents to trip him up with. Yeah, you do. You do the same thing that I do to Steve. You you landmine the text, don't you? Steve has this amazing ability to um, read a script that he hasn't seen before. Uh, so I put in all sorts of little things that he doesn't realise he's said, but he's said with great expression. But you you do landmine the text for Cobner, don't you? Well, I don't landmine it like that. It was cruel, and I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, Ben. Yes, it is cruel. Thanks, man. Well, I think he's getting very famous. You know, we can't afford to offend him anymore. When we started, he wasn't so well known. And so you could go, oh, Cobbler can come in on Saturday and do it. But now, it's like, oh, no, Cobbler's in America filming with Cumberbatch. And you're sitting there going, oh, for God's sake. Well, do you know what? We were, my, the, the family and I were watching Paddington 2 the other day, and I went, yeah, I, I know that voice. Tell me. He didn't tell me. And then suddenly he's up in Paddington 2, and then Mary Poppins. I, I, and again, I recognised the voice in both before I recognised him, having spent yeah. so many hours with your books. And uh, he's also in Doctor Strange. Uh, I, ha- I didn't notice him in that. But having said he's all this about... He's a therapist in Doctor Strange. Ah, OK, well, I, I need to watch that one again, so that's fine. Um, so... Imagine my horror, this is the fake horror bit, imagine my horror when I found out there was a new Rivers of London audiobook and Cobner wasn't narrating it. I'm a man of a certain age, Ben, and I fear change. 
Well, that's all right because it's only for the it's only for the ones where Peter Grant isn't the main character. Uh, ben Aronovich there talking to Matt Layton, and what a cliffhanger to leave part of one of the interview on there, Matt, about no Cobner in the next audiobook. Mm. Well, uh, I have to say I, I was cheesing it up a little bit, and there is a very good reason. And as much as I had built up an attachment to Cobner, uh, you know, first name terms, uh, over the last uh, over the whole series. There is a very good reason that there is a very good reason that the narrator is not Cobner for the next book. Uh, and I won't spoil it, but this is the bit where we get to ask people to really take part. And the book is called The October Man. It's by Ben Aronovich. You don't have to have read all of the rest of the series. Um, but if you would like to come and play with us and join in and let us know what you think of The October Man and... The fact that it's not Cobner, if you're a fan of the series, or if it works as a st standalone novel, then that would be great. But more importantly, Steve, I'm going to ask you for a change. What did you think of this book? Um, I so I come I come from a point of view, and I, and, and I mentioned in in the uh, the interview. I'm not sure if it was obviously picked up without our funny phone line from space uh, in the interview but I came to listening to Rivers of London from a recommendation because I, uh, I saw a tweet from Andrew Cartmel now Andrew Cartmel was the script editor on Doctor Who in the late 80s uh, in the last few seasons with Sylvester McCoy and those were the, the that was the period that Ben Aronovich wrote for the series on and I think they, they they're obviously obviously pretty close and um, and Andrew Cartmel was really highly recommending that people should go read slash listen to uh, Rivers of London and started listening to it. First of all, the first thing that hits you is that voice. Is that it? Absolutely, the right voice to narrate this book. It's really kind of you. you it, there's there's a strong London accent in there. Uh, it's deep. It really reflects. Actually, the first for the first time in a long time, I've heard an audio book where the narrator really reflects the tone of the book in just because of the voice they have. Um, it's really kind of it's deep, isn't it? It's it's slightly gravelly. It's it's down to earth as well. This this guy Peter Grant is instantly relatable to you. It starts off in a very kind of normal kind of police procedural thing, you know, the day in the life of the average, um, uh, you know, copper and everything, and and then it just starts to go fantastical, and you know. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan, you know, being a Londoner and and knowing these places that 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 get referenced in the book, and you know, the, the, you know, the the, the the you know the, the spirits that turn up, you know, Mama Mama Thames and and all the rest is, I no, I just I just loved it. It's a real flight of fantasy. It's it's genuine escapism, and Lord knows at the moment with everyone just being so angry with each other in the world at the minute. Um, the 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 yearning for escapism is absolutely paramount these days, and uh, and and this book just really it was just a what's the audio version of a page turner because we're going to have to come up with this if we're going to carry on with this show you know yeah I don't know um, a it's a can't push the stop button on her I don't know we'll work on it we'll work on it but that's that's generally what it what what it was for me so like you say I'm on book one. Uh, you've done the whole series, and now you're on the latest one, and um, and and I just can't wait to uh, to, to catch up with you. Um, so obviously, no no spoilers, please. No, and and it's very careful as he indicates at the beginning of the interview. In order to explain it, you are standing on the you know it's very very difficult not to just be spoilerific. Um, I again have to. Uh, repeat what you said and also what I've said. That this is an excellent series of uh, books. Uh, I'm slightly jealous of you having so many to go. Um, and um, I, I wish, even though I've listened to them all again, I wish I could hear them with fresh ears for the first time. Um, there's a, a new one coming out in the near future. And yes, uh, you best believe I will be pre-ordering that as soon as uh, as possible. <laughs> 
This is Zone One Radio. Zone One Radio. You're listening to Audio Book Club, the world's only interactive audio review and recommendation podcast with me, Steve Phillips. You can find us on Zone One Radio on DAB Digital Radio in London or anywhere else in the world as a podcast, including Apple and Google Podcasts, as well as Spotify. Just search for the hashtag Audio Book Club. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. That's what it's all about. So tell us what you think on Rivers of London and the October Man for our next episode on Twitter. Twitter and Instagram uh, using that uh, hashtag or you can find us on Facebook by searching for Audio Book Club. Uh, so far, and we'll go into the Rivers of London book first of all, hashtag spoilers of course for uh, for our next episode where we'll talk about The October Man. Um, the best read I've heard for a long time was one review. Having listened to the first few minutes, says Sean, uh, of this book, I was a bit put off by Cobner's reading style but stayed with it and boy, how glad I am that I did. His narration is absolutely perfect and he carries you along with this tale as if it's all his own. The story is quirky, imaginative, very funny and visual. I love the mix of police protocol and whimsical wizardry. Brilliant, says Sean. Uh, Kim in High Wickham says, uh, fantastic, listen, have to review this. Never felt the need before, but this has to be one of the most enjoyable books I've listened to in eons. Uh, was a little put off at first, always wary of the bandwagon jumpers with latest fantasy novels. Can be a bit boring, but this was just fantastic. A gritty, great thriller plot and superbly narrated. If you're a fan of the genres, it be it fi- fantasy, sci-fi, mystery or thriller, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Please hurry up and put the next book on Audible. Uh, and uh, Gavin, uh, Gavin KS from Dunbar says, I took a punt with this and the reviews made me believe it was going to be fantastic. The opening was and I thought I was in for a real treat. Sadly, it started to fall apart a bit with some rather lame magic training and and all seemed a little pointless. The main story is actually rather good and clever, so I'm not sorry I read slash listened to this, but I don't think I'll read any more in the trilogy. Um, uh, so it's good to see that, you know, we've got, got, got to keep the balance here, of course. It's, uh, it's not, not to everyone's a fan, but but the people who are absolutely love this series. Don't yeah, they? well, do you know what? Your last uh, online made-up friend, Gavin, um, he makes an interesting point. Um, but for me, it's actually... Um, the mundane details that make the book more real. So, uh, you know, if I, I don't want to, I, I, I'm not particularly a fan of fantasy. I, I don't mind sci fi, but fantasy is all a bit princesses and dragons and warlocks, isn't it? I don't want to be seen reading a, a fantasy novel on a tube. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be seen doing that. But this... You missed out orcs. I missed out orcs. Damn those or pesky orcs. That got a bit orcs, didn't it, eh? <laughs> I didn't think I was reading a fantasy novel. I didn't see it as such. I uh, was reading a story about Peter Grant. And actually, the bits where he's moving house or cooking pasta with his girlfriend or driving around his Ford Focus, the bright orange one referred to as the Ford Asbo, um, or, or buying a sandwich from Greg's or... or or making sure he gets the Percy Pigs. These are the bits that make it so much more relatable and actually make the extreme parts of it, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It makes them realistic. It's it's easier to suspend disbelief. I would say it's probably easier to suspend disbelief as a Londoner. Um, and I really uh, am interested to hear what other people from other parts of the world think of it. Absolutely. Well, with that, we bring to a close the first half of uh, Audio Book Club Rivers of London Fest double episode special type thing. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks' time with the second part and we'll hear from, uh, with more from Ben Aronovich. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, let us know what you thought about the Rivers of London series. Uh, use that hashtag Audio Book Club on Twitter or Instagram or you can find us on Facebook by searching for Audio Book Club. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. that okay for you yeah did we point out enough just how brilliant it is point po- sorry point out what sorry point out just how good the series is okay well i just it's brilliant and everyone should read it and everyone should give it to their girlfriends and boyfriends yes it, it was brilliant
No, I love that series. I love this series. I love this series. And I'm really keeping a lid on the whole Doctor Who reference thing at the moment. And I'm just going to explode with all sorts of things coming soon, I think. Okay, we'll, we'll start with that next week. We, we better go before... Uh, but this is, brilliant. this is a brilliant series of books. This is a brilliant series of books.